Old Dutch Cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as Old Dutch Cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Nick, finding that imitation diamond in the crook's pocket is certainly proof that he was in on the robbery. Certainly would be, Patsy, if I had found it there. But you must have. I saw you take it out of his pocket. You did. I was trying to start something. Well, oh, I don't understand you at all in this case, Nick. You're doing the craziest things and not getting anywhere. Ah, oh, that's where you're wrong, Patsy. I expect to catch the robbers before I go to bed tonight. And that's a promise. <laughs> Now, the case of the imitation robbery. Today's exciting adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. As our story opens, Nick and Patsy are in the jewelry shop of Nelson Stroud, talking to the proprietor. It is late fall, and there's a hint of snow in the afternoon air. The Jewelers Protective Association tells me you reported that you're being systematically robbed, Mr. Stroud. It must have been going on for weeks, Mr. Carter. So many of my best unset stones have been stolen. Then it wasn't from holdups, Mr. Stroud? Holdups? No. It was a lot slicker than that. Uh-huh. You see, it's like this. Day before yesterday, Saturday, I happened to see an imitation diamond in the tray with a dozen or so real diamonds. So I became suspicious. Uh-huh. You say you just happened to spot the phony stone? Yes. So yesterday, Sunday, I came down to the store and checked through all the trays. And I found 29 paste stones mixed in with the real ones. Well, how much will the 29 diamonds that are missing be worth, Mr. Stroud? At a rough estimate in the neighborhood of $65,000. Golly. And you think somebody brought 29 imitation gems in here and walked out with 29 real ones? I know it. Well, how does it happen none of your clerks spotted the fakes? These fake stones are too good, Mr. Carter. That's the trouble. Here, look at this one. Why, Nick, that looks genuine to me. Yes. It is an excellent job, I must admit. A close inspection would, of course, reveal them at once. But about all the clerks do as a rule is to run their eye rapidly over the tray after serving a customer and check the number of stones before putting them away. Mm-hmm. Well, do you have any ideas how this substitution might have taken place? I don't think. I know. Some crook or gang of crooks has come in here time after time asking to see our unset stones and palm the real ones, leaving the fakes in the tray. Oh, but that would have taken weeks, Mr. Stroud. It couldn't be done too often. And even then, the criminal would be taking a long chance of not being recognized. But it must have been done that way. Oh, not necessarily. No, it looks to me as if the crook or crooks had inside help in this. Nonsense. All three of my clerks are fine men with good references. That remains to be seen. Show me what you have here in the store in the way of burglar alarms. Of course. You see, there are counters on each of the three sides of the store. Each counter has an alarm buzzer under it, operated by pressing a button with your foot. Then the vault where the unset stones are kept has a special alarm on it. Well, how is that operated, Mr. Stroud? Well, if the dial that works the combinations turn back to ten first, it automatically rings an alarm. They're all connected direct to police headquarters and the protective association. Uh-huh. The unset diamonds are kept in that vault? Yes. Here, I'll show you. There. You see, this vault is filled with little trays, only about an inch high. Each tray is numbered to identify the different grades of stone. Oh, golly, Nick, look at that. There must be a hundred trays in there. Just about. Mr. Stroud, I think I have a plan that'll test the reaction of your clerks. Tomorrow afternoon should be a good time. I'll let you know definitely the exact hour, because I'll need your cooperation. Of course, Mr. Carter. Uh, what are you planning to do? It's a little unconventional, but it's been done before. Now, here's the plan. About four o'clock, I'll send Miss Bowen here to see... And Nick says he's ready for the test. So will you please disconnect the burglar alarm system? Uh, you're sure this is necessary, Miss Bourne? Well, you're interested in having these thefts stopped as soon as you can, aren't you? Of course. Very well, I'll make the necessary arrangements. Uh, how long before Mr. Carter will be here? From what he said, he should be along any minute now. I can do for you, sir. Oh, oh, a gun. 
Put your hands on the counter. All three of you. And keep them there. But I... This is a stick-up. No monkey business. Hands on the counter there, you with the black hair, and quick. That's better. Now, you two. Get her on the other side of the store with Gola Lux. Now, look here. You can't... Shut up, Goldie. And keep your trap shut. All right, you other guys. Get her with Goldie, I said. And walk slow. So nobody looking in will think there's anything wrong. Okay. Now, you, Baldy. Uh, me? Yeah, you. Open up that vault. I I can't. I, I don't know the combination. Open up vault, I said. But I said For I the last time, will you open up that... All right, all right. Now, haul out all those trays so I can get at them. Wait a minute, Baldy. Don't be picking out just a tray with the cheap stones. I want them all. Yes, yeah, all right. Okay, that's enough. You can put them back now. What? what? what all right, Mr. Stroud. Well, Mr. Carter, I hope you learned something. Yes, yeah, so all three of your clerks passed with high marks, Mr. Stroud. Baldy here turned the vault dial the wrong way, which would set off the alarm. The other two stepped on their alarm buzzers. I watched their feet. Then if the alarms had been connected, there would have been three separate alarms rung in headquarters, Nick. Right, Patsy. Oh, by the way, Mr. Stroud, you better connect the alarm system again, just in case. Mr. Stroud, what's been going on here? I don't get it. Uh, this is Mr. Nick Carter of the Jewelers Protective Association. He just wanted to be sure you boys were on your toes in case of real trouble. Oh. Uh, you through now, Mr. Carter? All through, thanks. Then let's get back to my office. Uh, you can put the trays back, boys. It's all right, sir. This all seems very silly to me, Mr. Carter. Did you really learn anything from that little stunt? I did. Who's the young fellow with the blonde hair? That's my nephew, Bill Devlin. And the middle-aged man with the bald head? Well, that's Arthur Ryan. Been here for six years. Darn good clerk. And who's the good-looking chap with the black hair slicked down so neatly? Chap by the name of Robert Hill. He's new here, but as far as I know, he's absolutely okay. I called the firm he's been with, and they gave him excellent references. Maybe so. But he instinctively reached for a gun and a shoulder holster when I first drew my guns. Nothing against him yet, of course, but I'd keep an eye on him. Well, maybe he's used to having a job where he needed protection, Nick. Entirely possible, Patsy. I wouldn't want to say until I knew more about him. You said yesterday you thought this was an inside job, Mr. Carter. Well, I think now that you're wrong. What do you mean, now? I'll show you. Here. I found this under the silverware counter this morning. That's so. Well... Well, what is it, Nick? Wad of chewing gum, Patsy. And there's a diamond inside it. Diamond in a hunk of chewing gum? Yes. It's an old game. Cook comes in, palms an unset stone, and when the clerk's not looking, sticks the stone to the underside of the counter in the chewing gum. Huh. Then, a few days later, he comes in, scrapes the gum off, and walks out. <laughs> that way, if the stone's missed when he steals it, he can submit to a search and there's nothing on him. And I bet that's how all 29 of my stones disappeared. It's possible, Mr. Stroud, but I doubt it. I still think it's an inside job. And I'll tell you what... Uncle Max. Uncle Max, you said to let you know if anybody I'd seen before came in to look at unset stones. That's right, I did. Why? Well, there's a man out there now who's been in at least twice before. Ryan's waiting on him. Any way I can get a look at him from in here, Mr. Stroud? Uh, yes, I have a secret panel here that lets me watch the store without being seen. You're right here. Good. You mean that tall, thin man in the brown suit, Devlin? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Oh. I think, Mr. Stroud, I'll have a talk with that gentleman. Oh, now, be careful, Mr. Carter. I, I, I don't want a lawsuit on my hands. Well, Morgan, interested in diamonds? Huh? Oh, Nick Carter. Mind stepping into the office a minute, Morgan? I'd like to have a word with you. Look, why don't you mind your own business, Carter? I'm minding mine. I'd like to help you mind yours. This won't take but a minute. And I think you better do as I suggest. Okay, copper. If there's any funny business I'm telling Save you, Save it, I... Morgan. Right in here. Look, I don't know what right you got to drag me in here like this. A lot of diamonds have been taken out of this store lately without being paid for. You've been in here several times to look at unset stones. So I just want to see if any of those stones have stuck to your fingers. Wouldn't be the first time. Well, you cheap too far. Now, look here, copper. Carter. We simply can't go We can customer... in this case. Morgan's long record at headquarters makes me very suspicious. All right, stand still, Morgan, while I see what you have in your pocket. I'll sue you for this. I'll sue the store, too. See if well, I don't. Well, what's this? Huh? 
here in your vest pocket. A diamond. So he is. A... I, 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 I never saw that before. I, I swear. Now, will you confess, or must I? I take never it saw that it? before. Look, there, there, there's something wrong. I tell you. Yes, something is. Let me see that stone. Hmm. Certainly. Here you are. Uh, I thought so. It's a fake. What? You're sure? Well, of course, I'm sure. And I still say I never saw that thing before. But it don't make no difference now. See, you can't arrest a man for having an imitation diamond in his pocket. No, Morgan, you're quite right. You mm. can't. You can go now. Yeah, I'm going fast enough, but I ain't through with this. I'm going to sue this Thor. You'll hear from my lawyer later. But you can't let him go like this. Genuine or imitation, he's at the bottom of this. Yes, I think you're right, Mr. Stroud. Then why did you let him go, Nick? Finding that imitation diamond in his pocket is proof, isn't it? Well, yes, it would be if I'd found it there. Well, what? You mean you didn't? No, I put it there and then pretended to find it. What? The fake stone Mr. Stroud showed me yesterday. I hope you know what you're doing, Mr. Carter. This is all Greek to me. Yes, Nick. What in heaven's name are you doing? Playing games? Why, Patsy, you know me better than that. Well, I thought I did. Oh, by the way, Mr. Stroud, didn't you tell me none of your clerks knew of these thefts? That's right. I left the fake stones in the trays where I found them. Well, if you were so sure this wasn't an inside job, why didn't you want the clerks to know about the loss? Well, you see... Well, it was really only when I found that wad of chewing gum under the counter that I finally decided it was an outside job. Hmm, I see. Well, in that case, I believe I'll search your clerks before they go home tonight. What? May turn up something. What time do you close? 5.30, but I... 5.30 now, so... Or 5 o'clock now, rather, so I guess I'll wait, if you don't mind. Oh, I don't like it, but I guess you'll do it anyway. Go ahead, wait if you want to. Better take your overcoat off, Nick. It's... Pretty warm in here. Thanks, Patsy. I'll do that. Might as well be comfortable as we can while we're waiting. They ought to be through in the store by now. I told them to come in here when they were ready to go home. I can wait. I still say this is the craziest way to find out... You wanted to see us, Uncle Max? No, I did. Gentlemen, a number of unset diamonds have been stolen from the store recently. Mr. Stroud says you're all okay, but just as a matter of routine, I'd like to search each of you before you leave tonight. Any objections? No. All right, Devlin, I'll take you first. Yes, sir. You're clean. Now you, Hill? Yes, sir. Nothing on you? Huh. All right, Ryan, you're next. Well, I don't... I don't know. Well... Right? You can go now. Thank you. Uh... Good night, Mr. Stroud. Good night. Oh, Nick, that was the silliest exhibition I've ever seen you give. Why, those men could have a dozen stones concealed in their clothes and you'd never have found them. The girl's right. That was no search at all, and you didn't really think one of them would be fool enough to try to walk out of here tonight of all nights with a diamond hidden on him? Perhaps I was looking for something else. Huh? Something else? Did you find it? I won't know till later, Patsy. Oh, for goodness sake. Uh. I'll go and see that everything's locked up for the night. If you'll excuse me. Now, I want to get the names and addresses of those clerks before I go. Oh, where did I put my pencil? Had it earlier this afternoon. Maybe it's in your overcoat pocket, Nick. Uh, maybe. I'll have a look anyway. Well. Nick, you're looking in the wrong coat. That's Mr. Stroud's coat. Yes. So I've just discovered. And look here. Diamonds. Two beautiful diamonds. Yes. And these aren't ponies. They're the real thing. They were in Mr. Stroud's coat? Yes, Betsy. Two genuine unset diamonds in Mr. Stroud's overcoat pocket. <laughs> back to the case of the imitation robbery. Today's exciting adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. It's a few minutes after Nick found the two real diamonds in the overcoat pocket of Mr. Stroud, the jeweler, and Stroud has just returned to his office and is locking up the store for the night. Anything else, Mr. Carter? If oh, uh, I'd... yes, just one more thing, Mr. Stroud. Will you give me the addresses of your three clerks? There they are on that phone list. Oh, yes. Copy them down for me, will you, Patsy? Of course, Nick. And will you let me look in your vault once more before we go, Mr. Stroud? I suppose so. But I'd like to get home sometime tonight. You'd like to stop the robberies, too, wouldn't you? Naturally. By the way you are going at it, I can't see... There you are. Now what? I'm going to pull out certain of these drawers of unset stones. This, this... These two, this, 
And these two. Now, Mr. Stroud, will you tell me, please, whether or not there are any phony stones in any of the drawers I have not pulled out? Let me see. I know you pulled out every tray that has a fake stone in it. How did you know? I have a good memory, Mr. Stroud. You can close the vault now. Ready to go, Nick? Yes, Patsy, all set. Good. How could you tell which trays had the phonies in them, Mr. Carter? Those seven trays are the ones Ryan pulled out first when I pretended to rob the place. Well, that shows he's a good man. Wanted to get rid of the bad stones and keep the good ones if he could. Well, that's really clever. Now, look, I don't want to hurry you, Mr. Carter, but I'd like to get my dinner. If you need me, you can reach me at Deal's Restaurant. I eat there every night. Well, that is, unless you'd care to join me. No, thanks, Mr. Stroud. I have something else to do right now. Come on, Patsy. All right with you, Nick. After you, mademoiselle. Oh, merci, monsieur. Expect any results in the near future, Mr. Carter? I do. In the very near future. I hope so. Well, good night. Good night. Get in touch with me when you have anything definite. Good night. <laughs> hmm. It certainly doesn't sound very optimistic, Nick. And I can't say I blame him much. The way you've been acting today. It isn't like you, Nick. Well, this case isn't like any other either, Patsy. It's always a good idea to fit your methods to what you're trying to do. Well, good night. I'll see you in the morning. But you're not going back to the office? No, indeed. I expect to finish up this case this evening. I have something else I want to do tomorrow. <laughs> Darkest hole. We should put that dog on light switch Don't right on the lights. Uh, that you, Morgan? Yeah. Gosh, you gave me a scare. For a minute, I thought you were a, a cop. Well, you're getting scared at last, are you? It's about time. Been trying to tell you we can't keep this up forever, but no, you're new at all. Now look where we are. What are you doing here? Why'd you come here to my apartment? I came here for my share of the ice. I'm through. Washed up. After what happened in Stroud's office today, I ain't sticking what around. What did happen? Uh, that copper Nick Carter searched me. But so what? He didn't find anything, did he? That's the beauty of the way we got this racket fixed. They can search any time they like and find nothing. Yeah, you know so much, Ryan. Carter did find something. What? He found a fake diamond in my vest pocket. You blundering fool. Why the devil did you have one of the I pony... didn't have it. Carter planted it on me. I was framed. Framed? Why? I don't know. But I do know he wouldn't have framed me if he wasn't on to me. From now on, I'll be watched like a hawk, so I'm leaving town on the first train out. Anybody follow you here? Yeah, not a chance. A bloodhound couldn't have trailed me the way I came here. And I climbed up the fire escape in the back, and I got in through the kitchen window. And I ain't had a light in here, either, in case somebody might be watching from the next door roof, maybe. I hope you're right, Morgan. Don't worry. You're in the clear. But I ain't, see? So I'm getting out of here as soon as I get my half of the stuff. Can you find it in the dark? Sure. I can find it all right with the lights off, but a dozen detectives couldn't find it with the lights on. In the base of this lamp right here. Very cleverly concealed in a hollow special wall. They're packed in cotton so you can shake the thing, not here. Nah, either. come on. Never mind the lecture. Let's have the stones. I've got to get them first, don't I? There they are. I ain't count them. Let me see. There ought to be 28 of them. 29 we got away with when we left in the gum for a phony clue. Yeah, I may have to have some light to see how we're dividing him. I'll get a blanket. If you want some light, huh? I'll give it what to you. The... How's this? Nick Carter! How the juice did Don't you... let my gun scare you. You play pretty, I won't have to use it. But if you get rough, so do I. Uh, okay, Carter. What do you want? So a dozen detectives couldn't find the diamonds, huh, Baldy? I thought you'd have them hidden away pretty well, so I've been waiting in the bedroom until you found them for me. You mean... You mean you was here when Morgan, I... Morgan, you passed within two feet of me when you came in. I wish I'd have known you was here. I don't doubt it. Well, boys, that was a very interesting conversation I heard you two having. You can put it in writing later when we go down and see Sergeant Matheson. He'll be very happy... Get him, to... Ryan! Yeah. Oh, you want to play? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Come on, boys. Watch now. yourself, Morgan. I didn't want to shoot you guys if I didn't have to. And it looks as if I didn't have to. Homicide, Sergeant Matheson. Hi, Matty. Nick, got a couple of crooks for you. You want them for a Christmas present? Sure, I want them. 
Tell me more, Santa Claus. Tell me more. All right, send a squad car up to 1753 North Garvin Street. And now we return to Nick Carter. As we pick up our story, we find Nick and Patsy at headquarters in Matty's office. Mr. Stroud, the jeweler, has come down to identify the stolen gems. You're sure these are the diamonds stolen from your store, Mr. Stroud? As near as I can identify unset stones, I'm sure. Uh, uh, but there are only 28 here. 29 were stolen. Well, you forget the one you found in the wad of chewing gum. Oh, of course, Mr. Carter. I didn't think of that. Did those two men confess, Sergeant? Yep. We've got everything down in black and white now. Nick knocked all the fight out of him. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to have been all wrong in my opinion of your ability, Mr. Carter. I apologize. I thought you were just fooling around today. Well, I almost thought that myself, but... <laughs> Knowing Nick, I should have had more faith in him. Look, Nick, don't fool around without he's got some idea in mind. But you have to admit, Mr. Carter, you would have been stuck if this accomplice of Ryan's, this Morgan fella, hadn't come into the store while you were there. Well, that was a help, certainly, but I could have got along without him. How do you suppose I happened to be in Ryan's flat in the first place? Why, I suppose you trailed him there. Oh, wrong, Mr. Stroud. I beat him there. I was waiting for him when he got there. But how could you do that? Nick, you ain't told me the whole story now. The fake holdup told me all about that clerk, Ryan. Well, go on, Nick. Give out no secrets. Yeah, come on. Well, I told you that Ryan started pulling out certain trays of diamonds from the vault before I made him pull them all out. Uh-huh. Later, when I pulled out those same seven trays, Mr. Stroud, you told me those were the trays that contained all the phony stones. Yes, that's right. I told you that he was trying to be sure that if any diamonds were stolen, it would be the fake ones. But you forget... At that time, none of the clerks were supposed to know there were any fake stones. So he could only know where they were if he himself had put them there. Well, of course, Nick. <laughs> it's so simple when you tell it. His real idea was to get rid of the phony stones before they were discovered, if possible. But it couldn't have been Ryan. You searched him and found nothing. Well, Mr. Stroud, you really wouldn't expect him to walk out of there with a diamond on him when he knew he might be searched any time, would you? No. No, no, he was too clever for that. Well, for the love of Pete, who did take them out of the store? It couldn't have been Morgan, could it? That would have been just as dangerous. Quite right, Maddie, quite right. Neither of them carried them out. Huh? Mr. Stroud took the stones out for them. Now, look here, Carter. If you're insinuating that I... Easy, easy, Mr. Stroud. I'm not saying you knew you were taking them out. Huh? Now, here's what happened. Morgan came in the store every few days, always being sure Ryan was free to wait on him. He gave Ryan the phony stones. Ryan substituted them for the genuine ones, then put the real stones in your overcoat pocket. What? Nick, you mean those stones you found there this afternoon were put there by Ryan? Exactly, Patsy. What? When Mr. Stroud had dinner in that restaurant he said he went to every night, he hung his overcoat on a hook. Yeah. Hmm. And Morgan, an expert pickpocket, picked the stones out of his overcoat pocket. Oh. In that way, neither Morgan or Ryan had the stones on them at a time when they might be searched. It's huh. a wonder I never felt them in my pocket while I was on my way to the restaurant. You wear heavy gloves, don't you? Oh, yes. And you put them on as soon as you leave the store, don't you? I do. Well, see, there's practically no risk. Hmm. Diamonds aren't very big in an overcoat pocket, you know. Well, I'll be doggone. Oh, by the way, Mr. Stroud, here are two diamonds that I found in your overcoat pocket this afternoon uh, while I was waiting in your office. <laughs> Morgan must have been surprised when he searched your pocket for them tonight and didn't find them. Well... Thanks, Mr. Carter. You seem to have taken care of everything. If Morgan hadn't waited to try to get those diamonds from you as you left tonight, I might not have been able to beat him to Ryan's room. But he did. And I did. Uh, there's one more thing, Nick. You said when you held up the store that Ryan turned the dial on the vault the wrong way so as to set off the alarm. Well, why should he do that if he really wanted the fake stone stolen? Patsy had nothing to lose. He knew the other two men had already pressed the foot buzzers and sounded the alarm that way. And it was safer for him to do it the way he ought to in case either of the other clerks was watching him. <laughs> oh, I gotta admit it, Nick, you're a wonder. I suppose you planted the fake stone on Morgan like you did so as to put him on his guard and start him worrying, huh? That's the answer, Matty. Oh. There's an old saying, you remember. When thieves fall out, honest men get their chance. Yeah. Well, these two thieves decided to fall out when they saw what was up. And Mr. Stroud, an honest man, gets his diamonds back. Which is as it should be. Quite a tale, Nick. Uh, what happened to Ryan and Morgan? They were brought to trial, Bob, and sentenced to spend many long years behind bars. And believe me, they'll be a lot older than they are now when they get out. I'm glad to hear it. 
But what about the clerk who reached for his gun during the fake holdup? Did you ever find out about him? Oh, yes, yes. It seems that he used to be in the state police out west when he was younger. Really very simple when you know the answer, as Patsy says. Now, what can you tell us about the adventure that Old Dutch Clench is going to bring us next week? Of Bob, it's a story of what happened in one of our great observatories when two men of science each claimed to have made an important discovery. If they'd only stuck to arguing, it might have been all right, but the argument ended in murder. And a peculiarly fiendish type of murder, too, as well as a very difficult one to track down. But did you find the killer? Oh, yes, finally. With the help of a mad old man who didn't even know what he was telling us. Uh, what do you call the story, Nick? I call it The Case of the Heavenly Body. <laughs> Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time and over these same stations by the Cudahy Packing Company, makers of Old Dutch Cleanser. Remember, when you go shopping tomorrow, get the cleanser preferred by more women in America than any other. Old Dutch Cleanser. Nick Carter, Master Detective, produced and directed by Jock McGregor, is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Lon Clark is starred as Nick, with Charlotte Manson featured as Patsy. Matty is played by Ed Latimer. Script is written by Jock McGregor. Original music is played by George Wright. This program is fictional, and any resemblance therein to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is Bob Martin saying, when minutes count, use Old Dutch Cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.